What? That Vatican doesn't exist, and we never have tested this. As I said, all these nice words you heard from me, and all these nice laws you have from me here, it's never been tested. And the only way we're going to find out, there is a crisis. And, you know, a friend of mine, he went, he took the shortcut. He went to Egypt and he got 100,000 uh, acres from the government. And he paid a lot of money right and left here, and he got his land. And then, you know, he want to use it as, you know, nice cosmetics for other investment. The new government came, they said, sorry, the price is bad, they took 75% of his land back. So, the law has not been tested. If he took them to court, which I wish he did, it's bad for Saudi Arabia, it's bad for him, it's bad for Egypt, but if he took them to court, then at least we will have a, what's the word, preset, 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 president, yeah. of the cases of how is it going to be disputed. It was settled out of courts, out of tables, out of everything. But these things has to go to court, and your Vatican doesn't exist as of now. So it's nice to say Catholic marriage and all this, and write it all down in a good contract, and hopefully you will make the best out of it. But Professor, honestly, we don't have another choice. We have to invest in Sudan. We have to invest in Yemen. We have to invest in Somalia. We have to invest in Ethiopia. I mean, I would, I would argue against that, you know. If you were giving money anyway. Well, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like, you don't drill for oil in Switzerland because you know they cannot deliver, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, why do you invest in Ethiopia or Somalia? Yeah? Just pick up the phone and call Cargill. Uh, okay, there were these threats of food boycotts in the 1970s, but what happened to you with Sudan? Yeah, you invested billions in the 1970s and 80s uh, under Lumeri. First of all, he was too corrupt. Yeah, that anything would have come out of these projects like Kenana Sugar Refinery and so on. And in, in the 1990s, uh, Sudan tur tur turned its back on you, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, Saddam Hussein occupied Kuwait and, 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 and uh, they were applauding, so, so why, why, do, why don't you have a sense of insecurity when it comes to Arab brethren, uh, brethren and, and you, you have this kind of, of pronounced skepticism towards the US and other uh, meat suppliers like Russia? I mean, well, you have to, you cannot sit in two billion dollars, two billion Saudi Arabians have a trillion dollars, and other neighbors countries just basically are sitting very poor and you give hand out to corrupted politicians. Just a little bit. If that working before, it's not going to work anymore. It's, you know, it's the naked truth. You cannot just hand one billion dollars. Uh, I know the guys very well. I had a good conversation with him just a month ago about what went wrong in Sudan. Uh, he invested a lot of money in agriculture in Sudan. He thought Nimeri would last forever. Nimeri decided to back on him. He took he gave him an airplane and he said, get lost, otherwise I'll put you in jail. This is Amudi? No, Amudi is in Ethiopia. So, you know, it's nice to say we don't have nothing to do with it. We do have a lot to do with it. We have a lot to do with so on. We have a lot to do with it because the prices of giving them money, they're only, Sudan is only 15, 20 kilometers away from you. You cannot say, I'm going to be rich and filthy rich here and everybody goes to hell. It doesn't work that more. <coughs> Except a few, a few Somalis with their jet boats, look how much damages they could cost you. So, your insurance policy is it's a lot easier to pay them and to make development there. Yes, sir? Uh, you mentioned the quote of a bushel for a barrel. Yes, sir. Could uh, Saudis invest in a company such as Conagra in return for a portion of the oil fields? Well, in other words, what I'm asking would Saudi Arabia be open to this kind of investment? Why? I got the money, you got the product. You want to sell me a share of your company? I'll pay for it. You don't want to sell it? 
She will. No, but I'm asking whether Saudi Arabia. Why would I? Why would I trade it? I have. I have the cash, and you got the product. Do you want me to go buy a share in your company? Simple as that. Regardless whether I have oil or whether I have gas, we need. I think Saudi Arabia should go and do investment as a strategic alliance with the food producer. Why should I tell them, you, you know, I'll trade with you with your oil? I got cash. You want to sell your product? We'll buy it. And that's what, that's what we, that's what we, the fourth pillars of my uh, arguments is we go in a strategic alliance with the huge food industry. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, what happens if the uh, what happens if this doesn't work, and the aquifers continue to go lower, so the water table continues to get lower, and we have serious problems with water in Yemen as well, a huge population there. So, strategically, like long-term thinking, what, how can you, what are you going to do if this doesn't? Because this is a pretty big shift to turn around in terms of what doesn't work. Which part? What happens if... Uh, Water is going down for sure. It's right, going down so every day. Go down. Yes, sir. Right. So you, what happens if you never reach the point that you... Was it 5 to 8 million cubic meters with sustainable water, right? So what happens if you never reach that point? And I will not subsidize. We will not... We will subsidize any agriculture for that amount of your budget. We restricted your budget. We cannot expand that budget. I wish we can. We can. But we have been. It's true. We are using now, we are using 17, 18, 23 billion cubic meters of water. As I said, those center pivots, it requires, we take an average, and that is a very conservative average. <coughs> it's a 1,500 gallons per minute. That's a 6,000 liters per minute. In the U.S., I think, it's 230 liters per day you are using, or 250 liters. Let's go with 200, make it easy for me. 200 liters per day, that's 6,000 liters per month. So one minute of those pivots is your wa water for one month. We can't maintain that. Even in the U.S., the U.S. is dropping. We cannot pump water as much as we are doing now. I agree, but what's, so when, when is this going to stop being something we're thinking about strategically like you are, and when is it going to become a crisis situation? It is already. It's already a huge crisis. At the moment, we are operating at a 100% capacity, full. And I think on uh, 13th of October, the world will reach 7 billion. We don't have food for them. It's a very simple fact. Somebody said, well, they're all going to die, somebody's going to get, you know, but... Let's stick to what we know now. We ha don't have enough food to feed the world. We got to go with new technology, as the technology serves us we in the old days. We produce 1.5 times more food than is actually needed, so it's a distribution problem. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem of a massive meat consumption. This is, could be arguable, because when food, we have to say, what is the definition of food security? There is a 200 definition of food security. It should be available at the right times to everybody in the right price. So when we said there is abundant of food, it's about distribution, I think that slogan was very good a few years ago. 2008 and 2009 proved that's not true. We have lost a lot of land, a lot of farmers. People are going to urbanization. Farmers going poor. Why do you want to go to be a farmer? You go work in Microsoft and work on all these companies and go to a big city, work on the services. Look in the US, 99% of the people are going to more poverty. According to Brzezinski, I only heard it just two days ago in the YouTube from him, so don't call it anymore. <coughs> but in Saudi Arabia, we have a huge people going into poverty. How are you going to reverse that? You can't give them money and just say, stay home, do nothing. You got to get them to work. What I'm presenting, I could be wrong. What I'm presenting is 
You have to work into agriculture. One was just mentioned, which was <coughs> changes in diet, which is usually part of any discussion of this kind because it's making things more complicated. That people are moving away from uh, as they get richer, they, 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 the changes in diet actually point. have greater environment than that. That's a good point. And then the other question you haven't said much about the specifically what's in the way of your ideas. What, how, which well, parts of the power structure can become allies and which will never become allies? Let's go to the first part and then I need the clarification. It's uh, changing of diets, of course. In China and <coughs> India, as the society is getting more urbanized, they are changing, there is more food uh, in demand, uh, the fowl, they're expecting meat to go up by 70% production in order to meet the demand. In China, basically, in China and India, they are changing their food habits and they eat more meat, they want to eat more dairy products, they want to eat more uh, bread, and they have changed. And as they go from farming area into urbanization, they do. The richer they became in China, the more food they eat and different variety of food. The second part of your question, I didn't understand it. Well, I mean, you're, you're setting forward the prescription, and part of it is ending subsidies, bringing in new technology. And the obvious question is, why isn't it happening? Why, what are the factors that, what well, are the political factors and other factors that lead to resistance? Well, how strong simple, are they? Very simple. Any politician, it's so easy to spend two, three billion dollars in a project in Riyadh. He will get the. He will get the the wow, he'll get the claps, he'll get the recognition. If he spent 100 million riyals in Jizan or Nijran or then those urban <coughs> area, who's gonna clap for him? Okay. No one. Do they care about him? No. So why should he? So more of more politicians going into developing big cities, doing projects for the big city. I.e., I'll give you an example. Saudi Arabia spent 70 billion dollars. Buying weapons. Is that a good is that a good is that a good strategy for us? What the hell are we gonna do with these weapons? Are they gonna work? So seventy billion dollars. And my argument here is that twenty two countries. Let's say if we invest one billion, that's only twenty two billion. I'm talking about Saudi Arabia, which is three point seventy five. That's only five billion. I'm asking ten percent. All what I'm asking here is a ten percent of the budgets of 70 billion worth of an airplane, which we know damn well the outcome of it will be useless. The room went quiet. <laughs> well, it's a very profound point. Very important point. Okay. And on that note, unless there are any other questions, though, thank you again for coming. And <laughs>